Hi, this is Dana with GMAT Ninja, and today I'm going to discuss and or parallelism. So what we'll cover in this video is what is parallelism, what to do when you see the words and and the word or, and then finally we will finish up with some official examples. As a disclaimer, there are very few rules that you follow 100% of the time on GMAT sentence correction. There are pretty much always exceptions, so don't turn your brain off. You're always thinking about logic and meaning in the sentence. Um, and yep, you're going to find exceptions to these kinds of rules. Um, that being said, these kinds of words will really point you in the right direction of how to make the most efficient eliminations quickly. So you want to definitely keep your eye out for them, but just keep in mind that it is a reasoning test at the end of the day. So to start out, what is parallelism? As we discussed in the previous video uh, with the pairs of words that indicate parallelism, parallelism is just a list. So the author will be going along in their sentence and then they will suddenly break out into a list of different elements. The important things about these elements is that they grammatically fulfill the same function in the sentence. Um, <clears throat> so with the pairs of words, it's holding you exactly what was parallel to what. It's a little bit trickier when you just have an and or just have an or, because you only know one element of that list, and then you have to determine what else the author is trying to list in parallel. So as an example, let's go through this uh, sentence that I have on the screen. Here we have the dinosaur lived in a valley, ate leafy greens, and it exploded in a tragic meteorite incident. So the word and pops off the page. This indicates that we've got a parallel structure in our sentence. Now. I know that whatever is immediately listed after my and is one element of that list. So that's the one I'm going to start with. The word that immediately follows the word and is the word it. And what I'm interested in here is the part of speech, just like in our previous parallelism video. It is a pronoun. So we've got the word and followed by a pronoun. Now what I'm looking for is what else is the author listing in this sentence? Here, it's pretty clear that this is one element of my list, eight leafy greens. So I'm looking at what part of speech this bit starts with. Eight here is a verb. And then earlier in my sentence, I've got another thing that's being listed, which is lived in a valley. And again, this starts with a verb. So what I have here are three elements of my list. Starts with a verb, starts with a verb, starts with a pronoun this would not be good parallelism. Now, this one's pretty clear right off the bat that it's not gonna work. You also can think about your stem as well. So we've got this stem that the author includes before the sentence breaks off into a list. And here the stem is just the dinosaur. And these first two elements that are listed totally make sense with this stem. The dinosaur lived, the dinosaur ate. When you get to this third one, you can see why there's an issue. The dinosaur, it exploded. Suddenly we're repeating the subject, doesn't really make much sense at all. So this is the general process that you want to go through when you have an and or an or in your sentence. First notice that word, second look immediately after and determine what part of speech you're dealing with. And then finally, look to see earlier in your sentence, what is it supposed to be parallel to and does it actually match? Um, that's your overall process for parallelism. What we'll do now is go through some official examples. So as always, I'll throw one up on the screen here. You'll have about two minutes to work through it. Uh, if you need more time, you can always pause the video and take what time you need. And then after we will uh, discuss the example. So I'll go ahead and put that up now.
All right, let's go through it. And again, if you need more time, go ahead, go back and pause the video for as long as you need. So starting by reading the sentence as a whole, we have, in a plan to stop the erosion of the East Coast beaches, the Army Corps of Engineers proposed building parallel to shore a breakwater of rocks that would rise six feet above the waterline and act as a buffer so that it absorbs the energy of crashing waves and protecting the beaches. Right off the bat, what I'm noticing here is two different uses of the word and. We have the word and right here, and we also have an and here. So the author is actually making two separate lists here, right? Listing something and something here, and then something and something else down here. As always, when you have two different uh, markers going on, what you want to determine is which one is going to be the easiest to investigate first. Here, I actually tend to think that the second one is a little bit easier, mainly because this bit right after your and is in the ununderlined portion. So it's going to be set in stone. It's always going to stay the same. And then you can look for something that's going to change earlier in the sentence and make sure that it is parallel to this thing that you know is one of your parallel elements. Um, so immediately following this word and, we have the word protecting. This is a modifier. So what we're doing here is describing a function of stuff that comes before, right? One of the functions that the stuff that's coming before this buffer is doing is it is protecting the beaches. Now that we know we've got this ing modifier here, we're looking for something that could be parallel to this ing modifier and in A, really not seeing it. It seems like this is supposed to describe something being done by the buffer. So what we have listed here is uh, so that it absorbs the energy of crashing waves. And that is supposed to somehow be parallel to this protecting the beaches. Doesn't really work grammatically. We don't have a modifier that could possibly be parallel to this ing modifier. So that gets rid of A. Same thing with B, right? We have one element that is protecting the beaches. And then if you look at B, we have so as to absorb. Nothing that can really be parallel to protecting the beaches. Get rid of B. C changes the ending. So let's look again at that parallelism. Trying to be parallel to protecting the beaches. And in C, we have act as a buffer absorbing the energy of crashing waves. So two things that can absolutely be said in parallel, right? One, absorbing the energy of crashing waves. Two, protecting the beaches. So C has nice parallelism at the end there. There's definitely some stuff going on at the beginning, but we'll come back to investigate that stuff after we look at this uh, one parallelism first. Um, in D, same exact parallelism as in C. So let's leave it on the board. And then in E, we've got the word absorb. Um, this is a verb. So we've got um, absorb the energy of crashing waves and protecting, not parallel. Get rid of it. Now we're left with C and D. Parallelism at the end looks great for both of them. Let's look at this first and uh, when it comes to C. So immediately following the word and, we have the word act, which is a verb. Is there another verb earlier in the sentence that makes sense to list in parallel with this verb act? Uh, yes, yes there is. Um, we have this nice word rise. So if you list these two things in parallel, right, you get that um, this breakwater of rocks that would, one, rise six feet above the waterline, and two, act as a buffer. So grammatically, this looks totally fine. Meaning-wise, makes sense. Uh, parallelism looks pretty good in C. Let's look at D. We've got the word acting, which again appears to be a modifier. Is there a modifier earlier in the sentence that could possibly be parallel to the word acting? Uh, no. No, right? So this is uh, something that this breakwater is doing. It really makes sense for it to be parallel to this word rise. Um, so acting, nothing can really logically be parallel. Get rid of D. So based on parallelism alone, we are left with C, which is the correct answer choice. All right, I'll go ahead and throw another example on the screen. Uh, this next example is not going to have five full answer choices. It's just going to have three so that you can look particularly at the parallelism issue. Um, so again, take your time answering the question, and we will discuss in a few minutes.
All right, let's go through it. Uh, so starting with reading A as a whole, we have, there are several ways to build solid walls using just mud or clay, but the most extensively used method has been the forming of bricks out of mud or clay, and after some preliminary air drying or sun drying, they are laid in the wall in mud mortar. Immediately what pops off the page are several uh, parallelism markers. We have these ors and we have this and. Right off the bat, these ors are kind of not that interesting. Um, yes, they are parallelism markers, but the lists are just very clear here. We've got mud listed with clay, makes sense. We've got air drying listed with sun drying, also makes sense. So there's no need to really investigate those uh, unless they, of course, change later on in your options. But here, not really going to help you with making an elimination. This and, on the other hand, is a little bit more uh, complicated, so let's talk about it. Uh, immediately following our and, we have this after some preliminary air drying or sun drying. Functionally, this is just there to add some more info to the thing that comes next. It's not actually the key component of the thing that the author is trying to list in parallel. So that whole bit you can actually ignore for the purpose of parallelism. It's not going to affect your uh, affect your parallelism at all. So looking after that, we have this uh, word they and this word are, and what we're interested in is part of speech. They is a pronoun and are is a verb. Looking earlier in the sentence, now we're trying to see whether there is a pair of uh, you know, pronoun verbs that could be parallel to what we have following our and. And of course, it doesn't have to be a pronoun. It could be a little bit different than that. Um, but functionally, we're looking for something that plays the same role. When you look earlier in the sentence, the author is trying to list two things about this method, right? The first thing being the forming of bricks out of mud or clay, and then the second thing being, and they are laid. So this first thing that's listed, the forming of bricks. Um, the forming is kind of a weird looking thing, but it's just a noun. And then this of bricks out of mud or clay is just kind of more detail, some prepositions to describe uh, this uh, noun, the forming. So we just have this noun phrase up here, and then it's trying to be parallel to this pronoun verb. They're really not filling the same function in the sentence at all. So A would be out because the parallelism is off between those two elements. Uh, looking at B, what we have is a um, uh, method has been forming the mud or clay into bricks and after some preliminary air drying or sun drying to lay them. Again, we've got these ors, but they're not that interesting, uh, but we do have this and. We can again, just kind of get rid of this uh, this middle bit for the purposes of parallelism. Of course, you never want to just chop off huge sections of your sentence in general. But here, if you're just trying to look at parallelism, what we're interested in is what is actually being listed. Um, and here, that has changed from a uh, to say to lay. Um, to is a preposition. And then it's followed by this kind of like base form of, of the verb lay. Um, it's set in parallel with this word, forming, which again is just a noun. Grammatically, these things just don't match at all, right? We've got to lay, trying to be parallel to this noun, forming, doesn't work, get rid of it. And then finally, we can compare that to this last option, C, where after our word and, we have to lay again. But now, if you look earlier, it is parallel with to form. So the parallelism looks great in C, and C would be our correct answer. Let's do one more official example. So I will pop that on the screen, and then uh, we will talk about it.
All right, and let's go through it. Starting with uh, reading out A as a whole, we have uh, the 19th century chemist Humphrey Davy presented the results of his early experiments in his essay on heat and light, a critique of all chemistry since Robert Boyle, as well as a vision of a new chemistry that Davy hoped to found. So we don't have the word and or the word or here, but if you're looking carefully, you have the words as well as. Um, here, basically just fun functioning as a synonym of the word and. Um, so you don't want to turn your brain off. Uh, the markers are really going to help. But if you're thinking logic and function, you'll see that this is fulfilling the same function here as the word and. Maybe there are some small differences in meaning between and and as well as, um, but that's not really the thing that you're testing right now. What you're testing is grammatically, can this thing work in a parallel structure? So as always, we're looking immediately after our parallel marker as well as, um, and we have a vision. This is a noun. And earlier in the sentence, do we have a noun that could be parallel with this vision? Uh, yes, we have a critique, another noun. Um, these are two nouns that seem to be kind of standing in uh, for this essay that Humphrey Davy has uh, written makes sense, uh, grammatically parallel, so everything's looking good with A. Let's uh, leave that in for now. Uh, reading B, we have a critique of all chemistry following Robert Boyle and also his envisioning of. So now we've got the word and, um, also not really going to impact your parallelism, so let's not think about that too hard. Uh, following also we have his envisioning, which is a noun. This part hasn't changed, so it's still a critique up here, which again is a noun. So grammatically, these things seem to be parallel, but we've got such a nicer pair of parallel things in A, a critique and a vision compared to a critique and his envisioning, especially because we're kind of adding in this pronoun uh, here, who's that referring to? And we've got a little bit of ambiguity. Um, so the parallelism is just not as nice and you're potentially inviting some other meaning issues into B. So while B is grammatically correct, because we have A in the bag and it's so nice, I would choose A over B and eliminate B right now. Um, if we hadn't seen A already, B you might actually leave in, right? You might hold your nose and say, I don't like it, but grammatically it's kind of okay. Um, but because we have a nicer version of the same thing, let's uh, get rid of B and keep A. Uh, moving on to C, we have a critique of all chemistry after Robert Boyle and envisioning. Envisioning here is actually a modifier. So we've got this ing modifier, which could be modifying uh, this uh, essay on heat and light. Um, and it's trying to be parallel to this noun, which just grammatically does not work. So you can get rid of C based on parallelism. Looking at D, we have uh, critiquing all chemistry from Robert Boyle Ford and also a vision. So following our and, we have this a vision noun. And that's trying to be parallel to the word critiquing, which just like in C is a modifier. So it's kind of flip-flopped a little bit, but we've got the same overall issue of this modif modifier trying to be parallel to this noun. Not going to work. Get rid of it. And let's take a look at E. We have critiquing all the chemistry done since Robert Boyle, as well as his own envisioning. Uh, so again, we have this as well as. Following that, we have his own envisioning, which is a uh, noun. And we're comparing that to critiquing, which is a modifier. Not going to work. Uh, for the parallelism, so you can get rid of E. And A is the only one left standing. So overall, when you see any of these uh, parallelism markers, what you want to do is have that word pop off the page, look after, you know, keeping your brain turned on about what the author is actually trying to list parallel to what, then look earlier in your sentence, is there something that could be parallel to that thing? Um, I hope this has been useful to you and uh, hope to see you in the next video. Bye.